As 2020 comes to a close and we prepare ourselves for the inevitable dumpster fire that will be 2021, there's a question we all must ask ourselves. A question that has haunted mankind since the beginning of the written word and a question I have personally been obsessing about for the past month. What should my first book of the year be? Picking the first book of the year is something that should not be taken lightly. It sets the tone for the rest of the year and it tells the world what kind of a person you're planning on being and it's also the most motivated you're ever going to be during the year. It's basically a fortune cookie and a new year's resolution and a horoscope all rolled into one. Since 2018 when I began taking my reading seriously, also known as making spreadsheets for everything, I have taken the first book of the year very seriously and I have gone through all of the data and I believe I have some interesting findings to share with you. In 2018 my first book of the year was We Were on a Break by Lindsay Kelk. Now I thought this was going to be an excellent pick. I had read from and enjoyed Lindsay Kelk in the past, plus the obvious friends reference is a win and the idea of the We Were on a Break subplot being cut off at 400 pages as opposed to lasting seven seasons was very appealing. And I liked it well enough. At the time I gave it five stars though I think I was a much kinder person in 2018. It would probably be more like a four star now. I feel like it was a fun and solid read which is reflective of the year that I had. It was fun and solid and I read some of my favorite books of all time that year. Books like Sleeping Giants by Sylvan Newell and The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang as well as All Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle Nakamura. That's her name. Uh, I read a total of 49 books in 2018. In 2019, my first book of the year was A Better Boy by Nick Hornby. This was an attempt to put a dent into my physical TBR. I had picked this book up at a library book sale and I knew basically nothing about it other than that there was a Hugh Grant movie based on it and that was good enough for me. Again, at the time I gave it five stars, though again, it would not be that today. It was probably more like a three, maybe a four if I was feeling generous. As you can tell, I no longer have a better boy, which should give you an indication of just how much I enjoyed it. I unhauled it shortly after reading. But I picked it as the first book of the year to put a dent into my physical TBR. 31% of my reading that year was physical books, which was more than double what it was the previous year. And I also put a good dent into some, not necessarily classics, I don't think anyone considers About a Boy a classic, but older, more well-known titles. Some of the older books that I read that year include The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls, um, Watchmen by, who is this, Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. I also read Howard's End by E.M. Forrester, as well as Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. I also read what I currently consider my all-time favorite book, which is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I know this is a very basic pick, but it's popular for a reason. Uh, I read quite a few favorites that year, not quite as many as the year before, um, but still a, a really good reading year, and I read a total of 64 books. And then we get to the trash pile that is 2020. So at the beginning of this year I decided that I wanted to read more sci-fi as it's one of my favorite genres and I felt like I had been slacking on it. And so as my first book I chose This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Mahar and Max Gladstone. And this was one of the most disappointing books I have ever read. Just as 2020 was one of the most disappointing years I have ever had. I read some very disappointing books during that year as well, including Axiom Zen by Lindsay Ellis, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, The Grace Year by Kim Liggett, and All Systems Read by Martha Wells. All of these seemed like books that I would enjoy and I didn't outright hate any of them, but they were extremely disappointing for me. But the good news is I did end up reading more sci-fi. I read almost triple the number that I had read the previous year. And in total, as of filming, I've still got a couple weeks left. I'm hoping to make it to that 100 mark, but right now I'm at 96. Folks, that wasn't clear. So with all of that being said, I think I've come up with a plan for 2021. I want to get out ahead of the year and I'm going to pick a one-star prediction. That way my expectations are set properly 
and everything can only go up from here. The problem is, in looking at my shelves, I don't own a one star prediction. I don't set out to hate read books ever and most of my books are from the library so I don't have the same guilt about just taking a book off of my TBR if I've heard bad things about it. So my next idea was to go onto my Goodreads shelf and pick the lowest average rated book on my TBR. So I did that and it turns out that is The Favorite Sister by Jessica Knowles with an average of 3.1 which is extremely low for Goodreads. This is one that I'm still interested in even despite the low ratings and the fact that it's more of a thriller feels like a good idea for 2021. Thrillers really go either way. It'll either be a five star or it'll be a one star. The problem is I don't actually own The Favorite Sister and since we're on lockdown I'm not going outside anymore this year and I definitely ain't going to give Bezos any more money and my library only has the audiobook and for some reason I can't do it. I feel like the first book of the year has to be when I read with my eyeballs rather than my earballs. It just seems wrong to do an audiobook. I don't know why. I can't explain it. Just go with me on this. So the next idea that I landed on was a random number generator. Just go through all of the books on my Goodreads TBR and randomly pick one. Feels like 2020 was ruled by randomness. You know, where one day we had murder hornets and the next day we had no murder hornets. I know other things happened in 2020, it just seems like murder hornets were the most random. So I'm going to do a random number on my Goodreads TBR. It's not complete, there are definitely some books on my library wish list or some physical books that aren't on that list, but it feels like it's good enough, which feels like the motto for 2021. Or another one I came up with, hindsight is 2020. I feel like that's really good. I feel like they should put that on t-shirts. So I ran the random number generator and the first book that I landed on was The Future of Another Timeline by Annalie Newitz. I think that's right. Uh, and I don't actually own this book and my library doesn't have a copy of it so that one's out. But also I'm pretty happy that it's out because I don't know for some reason I assume just the title it gives me this is how you lose the time war vibes and we want to stay as far away from that as possible. So I ran it again and the next number that I came up with uh, gave me Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay, which my library does have, but only as an audiobook. And as we've established, I'm not going to do an audiobook. So you can see where this is going. I had to run it several times. I actually ended up running it five times, so we've already run it twice. The third pick was Anxious People by Frederick Backman, which I am on hold for at the library, but I'm not going to get it for like three months. Uh, and the other one was Everyone's an Alien When You're an Alien 2 by Johnny Sun, but again, I don't own that one. But we finally get one on the fifth try. So the book that we finally, after five attempts, land on is Evie Drake Starts Over by Linda Holmes. Now this is an interesting pick because it was originally on my list of books to finish in 2020 because I was recommended it through tailored book recommendations after Kayla's video about it went up. I'll link hers in the description. And I was recommended three books, the first of which was this one, Catherine House, which I hated a lot. This might be my most hated book of 2020. Uh, and there were two other books recommended there, one of them being Eve Drake Starts Over. And I think it's a really good pick. It's going to be writing all the wrongs of 2020 symbolically. Uh, and also just the title Evie Drake starts over. I think starting over in 2021 is a good idea. If hindsight is 2020 doesn't catch on, then insert name here starts over. That should be what they put on the t-shirts instead. So that's it. All that to pick one book. The first book I will be reading in 2021, Evie Drake starts over. I'll probably read The Favorite Sister at the same time, just because I want to. Um, but I will read those first thing in 2021 and let you know what the future holds for me and for all of us based on those books. So wish me luck. See you in 2021.